Hello, my name is Daniel Broadway, and today I'd like to show you Real Glow and what sets it apart from other Glow plugins. So here we have two identical circles, and on the left I'm going to apply After Effects Standard, and on the right I'm going to apply Real Glow. So let's go ahead and drag on the After Effects Standard Glow, and that glow is a little tight, so we need to expand it. So let's go to 200, and here we have our glow. And we can look at the fall off, and it's a very similar pattern to what you would see with a Gaussian blur or some other similar such thing. Now with Real Glow, if we drag that on, we can immediately notice a very drastic difference. The Real Glow has a more natural and photographic looking fall off, and um, the reason this is is that Real Glow uses an inverse square fall off algorithm to mimic real light sources and the way real light sources fall off. And so immediately you can get a nice and softer and more realistic look. So if we go back to After Effects, let's look at the interface here. And this glow has a lot of controls, and it's really convoluted and kind of clunky and not at all intuitive. Um, let's say we want to do a simple thing like tint. If we go here to tint, we can change these colors to blue. You actually have to change the color A and color B to do the tint, which is kind of a hassle. And even then, it will not change. You'll have to go up here until After Effects to reference the A and B colors for the tint effect. So there we have our tent. Now with Real Glow, you can simply click Enable Tent. And by default, the color is red, so we can change it to blue. And now we have our blue tent. If you want this white core like this one has, you can switch the tent mode from standard to softer. And now that will give you a very nice and natural looking light source. So the next example I'd like to look at is a motion graphics piece. This is what we're gonna start with here. We've got some programming looking text and some code. And I wanna add a bit of a glow to this main code source text and have it kind of pulsate just to add a little visual variety. So to do that, let's go to the edit logo comp. So here we have our main text. And if I hit transparency here, you'll notice that the text is over a transparent background. If we add real glow though, you're gonna notice immediately that the background goes black with the glow. The reason this is is that real glow puts any element on a black background to run its color and blur operations. But to undo that, simply click the unmult inside the user interface and it'll go back over transparency and you'll still have your glow. So the next thing we wanna do is add a bit of a pulsation effect to the glow. So we'll just come down here to the real glow options I'll click on glow intensity and add a wiggle expression. So we'll do wiggle, open parenthesis, two, comma, two, close parenthesis, and now our text will pulsate like we want. So now that we have that, let's take a look at our final product. So now we're going to look at an example of Real Glow on a visual effect shot, and we're going to recreate the famous lightsaber effect with it. This footage was provided to us by Nathaniel Cowie, and it is from Alex vs. Nate 2, which is an awesome lightsaber duel you can check out on YouTube. So here we've got our blade, and right now it is just a white solid with a mask, animated mask, and if you go into the pre-comp here, um, you can see that's just the mask there, and it just animates to follow the live action blade. So we go back here where we've pre-comped and we want to drag Real Glow onto our pre-comped blade. And right now we get the blade effect with the glow, which the glow is already looking really nice. And I'm just going to mention a couple of controls here. There's two ways you can kind of add this glow together. And one of them is screen, which is good for if you're in a non-linear workspace or even sometimes a linear workspace, it may just give a nicer fall off. But um, Sometimes if you deal with overbrights, if you were to take this intensity into overbright range, uh, you may want to go to add for a more uh, photorealistic result. So that's just a couple things to know there. Um, but I'm going to put it back to screen for this example. Now we've got a nice looking glow, nice looking fall off. So uh, I'm going to set this layers transfer mode to screen so that it can go over back over the plate. And that's looking really nice. Um, you'll notice here that this blade doesn't go all the way to the edge of the glow. So just hit repeat edge pixels so that it'll continue out and that's pretty good. So to give this blade some color, we're gonna go ahead and hit enable tint. And by default, it'll be red. Now the default tint mode is standard and there's three choices here. But if we solo this layer, the standard will just tint things just like a regular tint control in After Effects will. Um, if you wanna keep that white hot core like you see on a normal lightsaber effect, you can switch the tint mode to softer and that'll just help you keep that 
incoming white core that we had from the rotoscoped blade and that gives us a nice white to red fall off like a maybe a bright light source would um, the other tent mode is light mix and basically light mix works like a um, a lighting gel and that may be even more apparent if i put a tent effect in front of real glow of another color let's say uh, let's say green and now our color gets mixed with that green so that's just a couple of things to keep in mind there. And if you also don't want to use screen here, uh, just another quick control, just like with the text, you can um, actually use the unmolt to composite the blade over the top. And whoops, I still got light mix, so we just switch it back to softer. And there you go. That gives you a little bit of a difference there. Um, but for a lightsaber, I think screening it is probably the most realistic way to composite. And so there you go. And one last thing I wanted to mention here is the gamma correction tick box. Um, sometimes uh, gamma correction can actually look better when you're an sRGB comp that's not linearized. Um, and you just check it on and you'll it'll apply a linear gamma correction. But uh, in the case of this lightsaber, I think we're going to leave it off. But I just wanted to make mention of that in case you want to use it for a shot. So now that we've covered all that, let's see this thing in motion. Build a RAM preview. And there you have it in motion, a lightsaber effect worthy of ILM. I hope that you've enjoyed this look at Real Glow, and I can't wait to see the amazing things you guys do with it.